Hey, it's Sal here, and you are watching Sal TV, Man vs. Machine, Machine, Machine. I wish I had a graphic for that, you know, something to show up that actually was like a... Anyway, uh, I don't have a graphic. Instead, I just have a gameplay commentary for you here, some actual Man vs. Machine. I had a ton of fun with this, and so to celebrate uh, 10,000 subscribers on Sal TV, I figure uh, this will be one of the videos I do. Not the only one. The other one is, of course, going to be that wonderful uh, fish slap that these, those of you who have seen me on Twitter, you know. I'm talking about. Uh, I did, in fact, get slapped with a fish. The video quality isn't the best, as it turns out, because uh, nobody in my family knows how to take a video at all. But I'll get it posted, I, I promise, and you'll be able to see it live as it happened. What a huge hit right there, by the way. Oh, sick. You, I mean, you got to do that. Anyway, Man vs. Machine. Um, let's get back to my thoughts on that real quick, since that's what y'all want to hear about. Man vs. Machine, it's a lot of fun. Uh, this is, of course, Wave 5 on Coal Town, which... Uh, we were playing, I think, on Advanced 2. I don't know what the difficulty settings actually do yet. All I know is that I had a lot of fun playing the first time, and yes, it was my first time playing just today, which I guess by the time this gets uploaded, it'll be yesterday. But yeah, Saturday, you know. Uh, I got into town early Saturday morning after being on vacation with no internet, and I was like, oh, I really wish I could be here for members of the machine. But you know what? The waiting makes it all the sweeter because... Uh, when I started playing today, everybody else already knew what they were doing, so I just kind of joined in. It was uh, it was hilarious fun, uh, and I was playing actually with Xtine, Adamisk, uh, and then a couple of other friends, Jessica, and uh, one of Jessica's friends, I believe. Don't remember the guy's name, and it's going to show up here eventually, I'm sure. Zaffa, Zaffa, it is. <laughs> I sound like a douchebag. It's probably just because I am though, so you know, we can call it that. And of course we had uh, a guy named Divine Espada in here as well, who was doing quite an excellent job, I should say. Everybody, everybody pretty much did awesome on this one. Um, but no, it's it's a wonderful, fun game mode. <laughs> Scout taunting there, because he can. I do love seeing that. And of course there's spies all over the place too, getting knocked into a pit. Whatever works, whatever works. Um, no, I mean, pretty much the whole point of Man vs. Machine, if you haven't played it yet... It's it's very much like a, a CPU slaughter defense mode. Uh, if you ever played a tower defense or anything like that, it's a bit like a tower defense, except that you know you're a mobile tower. But I mean, you get the same kind of upgrades. It's it's a very similar system. And oh, I love the scouts just stacking up there in front of the uh, spawn area. And you'll notice that it. So so I guess I'm gearing this towards people who haven't played it yet. But if you haven't played it yet, come on. It's like there's servers all over the place. Nice. Um, okay, yeah, wave nice. complete. Not too hard. One sick yeah, pipe there nice. ended that round, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. You get these upgrades, of course, run out here, uh, and of course, I'm I'm looking at this point. I'm like, okay, well, I've upgraded all my resistances, so uh, the scout has his special role. In fact, it's really important to have a scout on your team. If you don't have one, you're not going to get all the money on the map most of the time, unless you're just like, um, I guess, unless you're the the ultimate scavenger, at least is what I found today. But uh, no, I was I was managing to do a whole bunch of damage at this point. I was like, you oh, know, maybe I want to do some more damage instead of just being a tank, because I, I spec'd the scout out this game for tank. And tank it was. So, of course, he had all these crazy resistances, and I was like, you know, um, maybe I should just start doing some damage. So, of course, I grabbed the, uh, <laughs> grab a canteen, which I never use. I I feel really bad about that, but uh, basically I just bought a canteen there, and it was totally worthless for me. It, it would have been awesome if I'd actually used it, but I uh, just never did. And then, of course, you have... Um, nice. Uh, the round about to start, I do suppose. Of course, we're we're sitting here, kind of setting up. You've got to make sure your medics get the crits on the right. demo, so you can lay those crit sticky traps. Uh, a technique I think invented during the Monoculus craze, when Monoculus would spawn at the center of the map, and everybody would just lay those uh, Scottish resistance stickies, like you know, billions of them, and destroy them instantly. Pretty hilarious. Pretty hilarious. No, so man versus machine. You're you're basically playing a tower defense with upgrades, except that you're a mobile tower. Unless you're an engineer and you got a sentry, which is what our engineer over there is about to set up. x time himself, playing some man versus machine, setting up that sentry. And I tell you, an NG is super useful to have as well. Oh, there we go. Sorry, skipping the video. But we are about ready to set up for wave six, and I think actually are set up. So there you go. Time to see what happens as the tank rolls out. And I don't know whether it's randomized completely or whether the, the waves are kind of set in a similar fashion every time, whether Wave 6 is always like this with the tank first. I have not played enough to figure that out yet, but I'm sure everybody else has, and it will correct me in the comments. And I, I do enjoy the corrections in the comments, actually, because uh, I'm pretty thick-skinned, if you couldn't tell. Uh, if you want to call me names or whatever, I'll just be like, oh, that's cool, bro. Um, no, I, I think that there's there's a few things, of course, that Valve could improve about, uh, about this as well. Speaking of corrections... Um, 
when I tried to play the Pyro anyway, and maybe I'm just a really crappy Pyro, but I felt like the Pyro was really underpowered. Uh, you know, he's, he's supposed to be one of the highest damage classes once you get up close, but it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel like you're you're able to just completely mow down people once you get up close. Uh, and, of course, if you can't do all that crazy upfront damage when you're right up next to them, then you're going to die a lot, because you're going to get aggroed by all these things um, and die. So, you know, you can, you can go the resist pyro route, which I didn't try, uh, but even that feels... I guess it feels a little bit um, like you're you're too vulnerable and you're just not dealing enough damage. So I, I don't know. That was my experience as Pyro. I'm sure somebody out there is going to tell me, no, no, it's perfectly fine. But uh, I, I think the Pyro could do with maybe one or two more buffs in this mode, some kind of extra extra upgrade. I don't know. And then I would also uh, add in maybe some uh, some better upgrades to like the Scout to the Demo Man. Not that the Scout needs more upgrades because he's already sick, but like the Demo Man, for instance, you could customize him more and, and give him like an ability to just jump around without taking any damage. Uh, or maybe the same with the soldier. I know you've got the rocket jumper, of course, but I don't think the rocket jumper can be upgraded to damage. Maybe it can. I haven't even tried playing the soldier yet. I better figure out. Anyway, uh, a couple more like class customizable um, things without you know that are not weapon specific. So when you're when you're customizing and upgrading, a lot of the upgrades are weapon specific, and I'm I'm suggesting maybe that uh, the the standard you know um, what do they call them the body modifications? I don't even know the the standard modifications you can get as a scout without any upgrades, without any weapons. I would like to see more variation and variety in those. That's my point. That's the whole point. That's all I was trying to say. I tend to go on for a while. Not as long as certain people I know, but for a while. Anyway, um, we are here on wave six and, and we're kind of approaching halfway point, so Shit. can we actually beat it? I don't even remember if this is one of the videos where we beat it or not. Uh, if it's not, then I do apologize because I'm going to look like a uh, look like an idiot. It's okay, that was my first time playing. Or at least my first six hours of playing. I think it was six hours anyway. Uh, and you'll see that I actually upgraded the uh, reload speed there and the damage. And so we're taking down that tank. And actually, um, that tank is going to go down real fast. So I'm going to run back here, grab the the money that comes out of the tank. Which, you know, instead of taking on those snipers right away, I was like, well, if I grab the money as a scout, it'll give me a massive overheal. And then I can go, oh, right. That's a whole bunch of stuff. Well, anyway... That was that was kind of the idea there was, you know, the tank was about to die. I knew it, so I came and took that out instead. Managed to grab the money and uh, and come back in. Just keep myself alive. Keeping alive can be tough sometimes, but when you're playing as a scout and you can just kind of run away from just about anything, force and Uber, whatever you want to do, it feels pretty good. Um, on to some other stuff real quick because I may be running out of time here, actually, considering how close that wave is getting to being dead. Um, I do want to talk about I-46. I'm going to be there. I'm flying out on Thursday, and I'll be in England on uh, on local time. I'll be in England at, like, 10 a.m. on Friday, which is going to be pretty dang awesome. So you guys better meet me out there. If you don't, I'm going to be super sad. I want all of my uh, all of my good friends and fans from the Euro scene to be hopping up to I-46. And if you can't make it, that's actually okay. You just need to check out the stream. Support your favorite team. Support the stream. Of course, Vanilla TV is going to be doing it up. As we say at XTV, doing it up big. I think oh, that's the phrase. Dudes on but yeah, you need to be watching the Vanilla TV stream. I make, may make an appearance. I think all of our casters may make an appearance here. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, did we actually have... Okay, I don't think I actually had enough money to get all four of those upgrades, but I just spammed the button and it worked. So I think I actually got all four. Uh, maybe, maybe I had enough money. I don't know. Anyway, um, I do want to see you guys at I-46 support the teams. And also, um, while I was out on vacation with my family last week and didn't have access to the internet, I went to Valve. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I did not get to see Gabe. People were asking me that, and I was like, no, he wasn't there. But uh, you know who was there was Arsenio from Valve, and, and uh, he is like the merchandise contact from Valve. Oh, I suck. Um, no, he's like the contact for merchandise from Valve, so he's a rockin' dude. I got to meet him real quick in the hallways, and that was a fun time. But anyway, looks like we have won the game here, completely destroying the machines. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I don't do all these kind of commentaries a lot often, and I want to get back to shoutcasting pretty soon. But uh, thanks for watching, and I do hope to see more of you guys sticking around for the next 10,000 subs. Hang on, how long is left in this video here? I don't even know. Peace out.